A spite house is a building or something done to a building that's meant to piss somebody off. My name is Rod Chow, owner of Jack Chow Insurance, which is the skinniest building in the world in the Guinness Book of Records. I'm Eve Lazarus and I've written a book on Vancouver's hidden history. Chang Toy was a really successful businessman and he owned a Sam Key company. And around 1912, the city decided to widen Pender Street. So they came along and they expropriated 24 feet of the 30 feet. So of course that left Chang Toy with just a sliver of six feet. Back in the olden days, this building housed up to 13 different businesses. So if you look at from the front, it looks like a really big building and there's actually multiple doors. For us as insurance business, we integrated the entire building so that we can actually get from one side to the other through this glass walkway right on the sidewalk. And then you can see the glass staircase inside as well. We actually put that in. That's very unique because the city doesn't actually encourage glass staircases just because of uh, fire hazard. And it goes up into the second level, which each little section is like a bay window. So, uh, but normally with the bay window, you can actually look out a bay window, right? But here, these bay windows, you can actually step out onto them. So that gives a little bit more space upstairs. The extra, extra foot makes a little bit of a difference there. So we have an underground tunnel here under the glass sidewalk where people walk on. People walk above, but if you go underneath, you can actually see people walking above. You can see their feet above you. So that's pretty cool when you're underneath. Our theme in the building is mini or skinny. So everything in the building is either skinny or mini. Everything here is skinny right down to the toaster oven. Where's the skinny, the skinny toaster oven? The pandemic has really taken its toll on Chinatown. Um, we're seeing above average vacancy rates in Chinatown compared to the rest of the city. Some early numbers from, actually mostly outdated numbers from October were showing uh, levels of 18% vacancy. So that means one in every five shops uh, are vacant. I think buildings are so much more than just bricks and mortar. They hold the stories of the Chinese people, they hold the stories of indigenous people, of the black community, of legendary women that tend to get passed over in traditional history books. And I think when we've got the physical presence of the history, that, you know, of the building with the history in it, that we can go and see and touch and experience, then it just becomes new for a whole new generation of people. You know, in the long term, I'm not worried about Chinatown as a neighborhood, you know, there's going to be continued to be economic development. But, you know, is there still going to be that cultural character for the neighborhood? Is it going to be the same as how we understand it? It's going to change, absolutely. But can we, is there aspects of it that we want to maintain and conserve? And those legacy businesses are a critical part of that. We hope that the Chinatown businesses, they will start to open back up again and then we'll have more people come in here and uh, just really enjoy Chinatown the way they should enjoy Chinatown. We're here to stay.